Today, we're going to talk about the five reasons you want to have a will. This is David Klein Lovett, broker owner, next home, first choice, hopefully your choice, Realty. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. We give you informative videos on probate, on real estate, on the surrounding cities of Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, and all around. Fun stuff, informative stuff, stuff you really need each and every week. So subscribe, uh, hit the bell so you get notified of all of our videos. And let's get to it. Five reasons you want to have a will. First of all, I know this is a sensitive subject, so let's get to it and just know that it's something that we all have to deal with or should deal with. And I'll give you the five reasons why. First of all, what is a will? And a will is a legal document that describes how a person, the person writing the will, wants their assets, their estate distributed to their heirs, you know, their family and friends and charities. So that's what a will is, and it's quite legal. Okay, um, why don't we have wills? Uh, many people don't write a will, and I think the answer is obvious. Who wants to talk about their own demise, their own death? Who wants to plan their death? Uh, from a, a positive thinking standpoint, that makes no sense. Another is we might say we're too young, I don't have any stuff anyway, it costs too much money, it's too complicated. And the big reason also is we procrastinate. We'll do it later. The basic requirements, because if you're gonna have a will, you might as well make one that's valid, that's enforceable. First of all, to make a good one that is valid and enforceable, you need it to be in writing, you need it to be dated, you need it to be signed by the person making the will, and very importantly, it's good to have at least two witnesses. A notary will work, and it doesn't hurt to have your signature notarized. Two witnesses also sign the will, even better if you're having it done in a lawyer's office. One caveat, those witnesses cannot be beneficiaries. They can't benefit from the will. They can't get any of the stuff because you know they would sway it and it just would, would make it impart, it wouldn't be impartial. So those are the basic requirements. Another basic requirement I would say, and which is the experts say is to update it. What if you got divorced? What if you got married? What if you had new kids, new grandkids? So uh, it's best advice to update the will about every three years. And also you wanna keep it somewhere, like a lawyer's office, safe deposit de box, places where people, and they know where it is. Okay, so let's get to it, the five reasons you want to have a will. Number one, and this is number one, you get to decide who gets what. Would you want whether you decide or the state decides? I would want to decide. You know, maybe I have uh, one niece that's a millionaire and one isn't. Maybe I want to give more to that niece. Well, if I don't decide, they're going to give it, and then maybe they're my only two heirs. Well, the two nieces get 50-50. That's not what I wanted. But if I didn't make a will, that could be the outcome. So number one, who you get to decide. Number two, it's gonna save money. Money, money, money. Which is the estate, which is for my heirs. My nieces in this case. It's gonna save money on taxes. See your tax accountant, see a, a probate attorney about that. A will a attorney that draws up the wills. And it's going to also save on court costs because you're not going to have to have all these court costs. So it's going to save money. Number two. Number three, you get to pick who is the uh, trustee or the executor. The person who makes sure that I, I, I like the word referee, but it's really the formal word is executor or trustor. The person who takes care of it. And you, you want to have somebody that you really trust. All right. So you get to pick. So that's number three number four and this doesn't concern you so much but it concerns your stuff it would more than likely keep your family a family if it's very clear and by the way you want it to be clear 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 who gets what all right you don't want to just say uh all my kid uh name like your four kids or in this case you want to name your kids and that one niece and you just assume, since you didn't name the, the niece that has the million dollars, that's this one, 
um, on it that everybody gets it. No, say, this one that has a million dollars doesn't get anything because she doesn't need it. Make it clear, clarity, clarity, clarity. Okay, so now, um, number, number uh, uh, four, it saves the family. It saves the family arguments. And then uh, lastly, for you and your family, and maybe most importantly, number five, peace of mind. Peace of mind, you're at ease, less stress. It's a good thing. You just take care of it. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. You're like, oh man, I, I'm healthy now. Oh, I'm getting sick. I may die. I got to take care of this. It's done. Like anything, like like homework. Isn't it nice to have your homework done early? Your, your housework, whatever. It's done. Okay, now just to make things easier, and we've talked about this in other videos, uh, to make a list of all your assets um, on the list, say where they are, and then what the values are. That'll make it easier for everybody. Okay, that's just kind of a bonus. And now your bonus. Free book, I said free, a free book on the seven uh, biggest mistakes made in probate real estate and most importantly, how to avoid them. So click right here, you get your free book. All right, and also go to my website for free. And, and it's only like a, a 10 minute read, so it's really easy. Okay, so you stay to the end. A couple things. Here's a video right here. I want you to watch the five factors probate. You'll love it.